Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents Transcribed, the world premiere of a new musical version of Sir James M. Barrie's Polity Street, starring Gordon McRae and his celebrated guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Tonight, we inaugurate another season of new musical plays and operettas, created especially for the Railroad Hour, brought to you by the American Railroads. The same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Our Railroad Hour playwrights, Lawrence and Lee, have fashioned a new musical from J.M. Barry's enchanting Quality Street. I shall be the dashing Captain Brown, and lovely Dorothy Warren Schold is Miss Phoebe. The harpsichord is to remind you that we are in the time of the Napoleonic Wars, and that we are in a very tiny town in England. We are walking down a very tiny but very special street, Quality Street. I've walked down the Strand and the shores easy. I've followed a band down the Appian Way. But no place I've been seems nearly as sweet as one block of home known as Quality Street. The farther I've traveled, the farther my feet have fled from my heart here on Quality Street. And though I'm a roamer, I roam incomplete. My heart stays at home here on Quality Street. And now, if you'll glance through the window of that house, you'll meet our heroine, Miss Phoebe Throssell. Her sister, Miss Susan, might have been our heroine ten years ago, but she has already tucked her girlish ringlets inside her cap. Listen. Oh, Susan. Oh, Susan. Phoebe. My dear sister, what is wrong? You are positively trembling. Oh, Susan, I've just talked to Mr. Valentine Brown. My love, has he... Oh, not... Not yet. I passed him on the street and he closed one of his eyes at me and then quickly opened it. How dashing! Well, then he said, I wish to call and tell you something important this afternoon. Oh, Phoebe, to think it has all happened in a single year. I have a wedding gift for you. Oh, not yet. Oh, it has been ready for a long time. I meant it for myself, Phoebe, many years ago. I had hoped... His name was William. But I was prudent. I hesitated too long. Oh, dear Susan, what was it? It's here, in the trunk. Oh, wedding gown. Oh, how sweet. How beautiful. But, Susan, I could not. Oh, wear it, my love. And when he offers, do not hesitate. Say yes, and quickly. Oh, yes, I shall say yes. When you've wandered arms to hold you And those arms open wide You run and hide inside him When you long for Sweet and pure song, your invitation to dance and romance. When you've waited for your one love, and your one love appeared as snow as snow in spring, I'm wrong to. 
something. I think he kissed me once. You think? Oh, it was raining and my face was wet. He said that was why he did it. Oh, Phoebe. Before he had offered? Oh, that knock. So dashing. Come. Why, Mr. Valentine Brown, what a surprise. Miss Susan, how do you do, ma'am? Name is Phoebe. Though we have met today already, I insist on shaking hands with you again. Always so dashing. <laughs> and my other friends. I hope I find them well. The harpsichord, ma'am, seems quite herself today. And I trust the ottoman passed a good night. <laughs> we are all quite well, sir. Now, please excuse me. Oh, you're not going, Miss Susan. Oh, but I must. Then I must tell you alone my news, Miss Phoebe. It was you who first put the idea into my head. Oh, I hope not. Your demure eyes flashed so every time the war was mentioned, I... Mr. Brown, what is it you have to tell me? That I have enlisted. <gasps> oh. I leave tomorrow for my barracks. Yes, Miss Phoebe. This must be goodbye. Oh, you have done very bravely, Mr. Brown. I shall pray for you. Thank you. When I think of home, I shall think of this room. And of you, Miss Phoebe. For you have been to me like a quiet, old-fashioned garden full of the flowers that Englishmen love best. When I am far away, ma'am, I shall think often of Miss Phoebe's lonely soul, which is her garden, and shut my eyes. And I shall walk in it. Miss Phoebe, who lives here on Quality Street, is a lass who makes every man's heart skip a beat. A beauty she is blessed with so ample a share. Men call her. the ideal recruit, ma'am? A man without a wife or a mother or a sweetheart? No sweetheart. Oh, who would have me? Ah, one last look at this room and may it be unchanged when I come back. Goodbye, dear ladies. Put away the wedding gown, Susan. Oh, my Phoebe. My poor Phoebe. Oh, we must do something. Something to help us forget. I think, Susan, I think we shall open a little school. You schoolmistress? Baby of the ring? I shall hide the ringlets away in a cap like yours, Susan, and I shall try to look staid and to grow old quickly. <laughs> Susan? If the herring and a half cost three halfpence, how many for eleven pence? Eleven? William Smith says it is fifteen, and he is such a big boy, do you think I ought to contradict him? Oh, 
It is 11. I once worked it out with real herrings. Listen. Oh, it's the music for tonight's ball. It is not every year that there is a Waterloo to celebrate. He'll be at the ball tonight. Oh, just think. We have not seen him now for ten years. Ten years. Oh, but Susan, I look twenty years older in my schoolmistress cap. Who can that be? Come. Greetings. Greetings, dear ladies. Why, Captain Brown. Oh, dear. I hope I do not intrude, but I wish to report myself home again. Miss Susan, your servant. But where is Miss Phoebe? Phoebe of the ringlets. I do not believe I know this other lady. Welcome home, Captain Brown. Miss Phoebe, is that you? Yes, I've changed, Captain Brown. Well, we are we are both older, Miss Phoebe. I have come to invite you to the ball. Oh, no, Captain Brown. You see that my dancing days are over. Oh, no. We are proud of you. You, you have been such a brave soldier. I believe ladies who keep a school are also brave. My respects to you both. Now I must report my arrival home to my superior officer. Dear ladies. Susan, he thought I was old. I'm only 30. Now why does 30 seem so much more than 29? He will go dancing tonight with some little goose of a girl. Oh, it is what gentlemen prefer. I know just how those silly girls talk. <laughs> oh, la, Captain Brown, you are such a quiz. <laughs> that is not ladylike, Phoebe. Oh, I'm tired of being ladylike. Where is my youth, Susan, my youth? The clock and the calendar are with all of us, Phoebe, dear. No. If I were to dress young again and put the candles back into these eyes that were bright once and, and coax back my curls hidden under this... Oh, listen. The music is calling, Susan. He is calling. I will go to the ball and celebrate Waterloo. But dare you do it? You, a schoolmistress? I will not go to the ball as that school teacher. I shall be... I shall be... My niece, Miss Libby. Who? We shall create a niece for ourselves. Oh, dear. And I shall flirt and pout and giggle like all the other geese. <laughs> oh, la, Captain Brown. The dashing Captain Brown. Oh, Susan, we shall tear up the calendar and stop the hands of the clock for one beautiful night. And I shall be in his arms. for act two of our new musical version of Quality Street. Are you one of the millions of Americans for whom this month of June is the start of the happiest season of the year? Man, woman, or child, with school letting out and summer resorts opening up all over, the chances are you're looking forward to fun, and lots of it. The question is, how can you make the most of your time and money? To begin with, your weekend or vacation is divided into three parts. Getting there enjoying your stay, and getting home. As for getting where you're going, can you count on traveling in complete air-conditioned comfort and arriving refreshed, relaxed, and ready for fun? You can if you travel by train. Because over the steel highways of America's railroads glide fleets of swift hotels on wheels, offering every comfort and convenience a family could wish for. As a result, the family that travels by train knows it will arrive safely, rested, and ready to enjoy their visit to the utmost. Furthermore, the perfect vacation probably calls for covering a fair amount of distance. You like to get away from everyday familiar faces and places and hit the road to a place with a real change of pace, whether it's an old family favorite or someplace enchantingly new and different. And to make that kind of truly worthwhile vacation trip possible, 
You have only to give the word. A small army of railroad men and women will immediately go to work for you. All you do is sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. And last but not least, no one wants to spoil a wonderful vacation with a long, tiresome, exhausting drive home. Instead, let the railroads do all the work for you, permitting you and the family to bring a grand vacation to a perfect end. Rested, refreshed, and with an album of wonderful memories of the best vacation you ever had. Now, here is Act Two of Lawrence and Lee's musical impression of Sir James M. Barry's Quality Street, starring Gordon McRae as the dashing Captain Brown and Dorothy Warrenshold as Miss Phoebe, with Isabel Jewell as Miss Susan. Shall we peek in at the ball? where Miss Phoebe is masquerading as the young coquette, Miss Libby. Oh, la, Captain, how you dance. My dear Miss Libby, you could never deny that you are Miss Phoebe's niece. The likeness, even the voice. Oh, la, sir, everyone says that, and indeed it is no compliment. Tell me, Captain, are you happy to be home? Happy, Miss Libby. I am ecstatic. Why, a man dreams on the battlefield of... Out of just such a moment as this. When twilight weaves a gentle spell over land, over sea, my heart will always turn to thee, to the friendly land I love so well. When dawn enchants with rosy light o'er the tree. Sweet and happy homes When all the world was glad and bright My heart was so high And turned to thee Sweet love of happy dancing hours Fairest land home with her dreadful headache. Miss Libby, would you come out into the terrace with me? There is something I wish to ask you. Oh, la. Oh, but of course, you dashing captain. Oh, la. Tell me, Miss Libby, wh- why do you keep using that expression? Oh, you are a quiz. After all, I'm just a helpless little nobody, and you are a great, great hero. La. <laughs> But you're growing increasingly bolder, sir. Lily's beginning to live. La, la, what can the matter be? La, la, what can the matter be? La, la, what can the matter be? Lily's beginning to live. Hold up. Miss Livy, there is something I must tell you. I am in love with a lady who was once very like you. Your Aunt Phoebe. Oh, you're making sport of her. The old schoolmistress in her cap. She is noblest of them all. Tell me, Miss Livy, do you think there is any hope for me? I know this. There was a man whom Miss Phoebe loved long ago, but he did not love her. Now, here was a fool. He kissed her once, but he forgot about it. I, I suppose men are like that. No, Miss Livy, men are not like that. I'm a very average man, but I thank God I am not like that. It was you. Did Miss Phoebe tell you that? Yes. She said it was raining and her face was wet. You told her you did it because her face was wet. I must win her. Miss Livy, with your help... My help? I tried to spoil it all. You mean you tried to flirt with me? I know. And that is one of the things that has made me love her even more. Yes, sir. You so resemble her as she was. For an hour, Miss Livy, you bewitched me. But it was only for an hour. How like at first, but soon it was how unlike. I once called her a garden, a quiet, loving garden. 
That is the woman I wish to marry. Excuse me, Captain Brown. I, I must go now to, to join my chaperone, dear Aunt Susan. Certainly, ma'am. Oh, Susan. Oh, Susan, it's Phoebe he loves, not Livy. He loves me. Me, Phoebe. <laughs> Brown, you must not call again. Then why not, Miss Phoebe? Oh, while you were away, Captain, many things have changed. Nothing has changed. You might not have known it, but I've been with you on Quality Street every single day of that time. <laughs> Dear ladies, although it seems I've been away a hundred years or more, the truth is not a day past that I've not passed your door. I've walked down the Strand and the Champs Elysees. I've followed a band down the Appian Way, but no place I've been seems nearly as sweet as one block of home known as Quality Street. The farther I've traveled, the farther my feet have fled from my heart here on Quality Street. And though I'm a roamer, I roam incomplete. My heart stays at home here on Quality Street. Why, Miss Phoebe, there are tears trembling on your eyes. Oh, no, Captain Brown, no, there are not. And you've shaken your head so emphatically, Miss Phoebe, that two girlish ringlets which seem to belong to Miss Livy have peeked out from the schoolmistress's cap. Oh, dear. And speaking of Miss Livy, where is the dear child? Uh, ill. She's quite ill. Oh, is she in the bedroom? Oh, don't go in there. Oh, dear. Why, Miss Livy, you're looking quite pale. What's he talking to? The very color of the bed sheets. I think the air of Quality Street is not good for you, Miss Libby. You should leave immediately. Yes, we shall wrap you in blankets. A whole roll of them. Blankets? There. Now, Miss Libby, we shall carry you into my carriage. Oh, Phoebe. Susan, he's, he's rolling the blankets up to look like a person. Say goodbye to your dear aunts, Miss Libby. Ooh la. <laughs> no. Do not strain your tinky little voice. I shall do it for you so that all of Quality Street can hear. Goodbye, dear Aunt Susan. Goodbye, dear Aunt Phoebe. The poor invalid Lily wishes you and all the ladies on Quality Street farewell. Goodbye, Livy. Oh, Susan, what a wonderful man. He's coming back. Oh, dear. Are my ringlets inside my cap or out? Am I Livy or, or Phoebe? You are both, dear Phoebe. Oh. It is not raining, but your face is wet. I wish always to kiss you when your face is wet. Oh, Captain Brown, you, you know all about Livy. Miss Livy will never trouble you again. Dear Phoebe Throssell, will you become Phoebe Throssell Brown? You know everything, but you must know the most important thing, that I am not a garden. I know everything, ma'am, except that. But there will be a day when I will not even be able to masquerade as young. What then? What then? What then, Miss Phoebe? Believe me, if all those endearing young charms Which I gaze on so fondly today Were to change by tomorrow and
the dictates of my heart and enjoin me to accept your too flattering offer. Come to my arms, Miss Phoebe. One thing, dear Captain Brown. Yes, my love. I'll kiss Susan, too. Well. Dorothy Warnshold will be back in just one moment. Our thanks to Isabel Jewell and our entire company. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin, do you know how the dictionary defines the word vacation? It's a period for rest and recreation during which work is suspended. Yes, and the key word is rest. You need and deserve a period of all-out relaxation after a hard year's work You need a complete change of scene. And the best way to assure yourself of those things is to travel on your vacation by train. All America is within easy reach that way. The trip itself is a real and exciting vacation. And all the work of traveling is done for you. You travel safely, comfortably, and dependably while the panorama of America unfolds before your eyes. And you arrive fresh, rested, and ready to enjoy your vacation to the utmost. When you travel by train. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is our lovely guest star, Miss Dorothy Warrenshold. <laughs> oh, la, I love doing this show, you dashing Gordon McRae. <laughs> well, as always, you were wonderful, Dorothy. <laughs> What's on the show train next week? Well, now, you just listen. There's a long, long trail unwinding into the land of my dreams. That's just one of the many songs you and I will be singing next week, Dorothy, as we offer the world premiere of a brand new musical, Dear Yesterday. See you next Monday, Gordon. Until then, Dorothy. All aboard! Well, dear friends, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night and the premiere performance of Dear Yesterday, this is your friend Gordon McRae saying goodbye. The Railroad Hour was transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae may soon be seen co-starring in By the Light of the Silvery Moon in Technicolor. Our choir was under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music was prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Until next week, this is Marvin Miller saying good night for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Attend the coronation tomorrow on NBC.